over into speaker view. I'm gonna hit the go live button. So da 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 da. Says we are live. Okay, we are live. That's excellent. Here we are. Well, hello everyone. <laughs> After much technical glitching, we are here. I'm Kat Udero, psychic empath and psychic wrangler. And before we see who I have wrangled in today's show, let me welcome you to Third Eye Salon, where in each and every show, we take a fresh look between the veils of reality. And today, we are looking between the veils of Jenna Layden's ET awakening and reconnection to her ET family, of which we are very excited to get into. But before we do that, I want you to say hello to the lovely Linda Coulter Burge, and I'll flip us into Brady Bunch view so everyone can see us here. Hey, Linda, how are you? She is a psychic medium. Well, she's not, she is a psychic medium, but she's a psychic conscious business coach. She can, she's just kind of psychic all over the place and a wonderful human being in general. How are you, Linda? I'm doing well. And yes, occasionally medium stuff comes in. So you never know. It does happen. <laughs> we were talking about Disneyland experiences in the, uh, or both Jason and Linda <laughs> had experiences in, in the haunted mansion with spirits clustering around, but Take it away, Miss Linda. Okay, so I love that we're here again. I am your live stream chat host. As always, my rule is play nice or get out. And so that means being respectful to each other. And I love discussion. Um, just be nice as you're doing it. Even if it's challenging, you can challenge each other. Just be nice when you're doing it, okay? We're here to grow. Um, Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, because this is going to be great content and we want more people to see it. And they can't do it if they don't see the show on the algorithms. So please hit the like, share and subscribe and make sure that you check the links below because we're going to have Jenna's information down below there. And um, check us out on our uh, Spotify and Apple podcasts. Thank you also to our Third Eye Salon people who have donated to us. Without you, um, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you. And um, for joining our Facebook group. Love our Facebook group. It's so supportive of everyone. And it's a safe place to go to, to learn and talk about all the crazy stuff that we have that goes on. Um, and with that, I don't know if going crazy to Jenna is great, but I'm going to say <laughs> hi to Jenna. We're crazy happy to have Jenna here. Crazy happy to have Jenna on. Good segue. Hi, Linda. Hi, Kat. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be here with you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Miss Jenna. Before we get into Miss Jenna, although her under story, let's say hello to Mr. Jason, who is a psychic. He is a psychic medium for realsies. I mean, like that's it. that's his way he goes by. Um, he's also an artist channel for your ET guides. So if you have ET guides and star family that you would like to see visually, he kind of does that. You can see his artwork in the background. Um, and with that, Jason, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, I, I love the mantis energy and I feel like I'm going to start yawning a whole lot because there's a lot of energy around me. Um, so if you see me yawning a thousand times, I'm sorry, uh, but I'm so excited to have this conversation and thanks again for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, we love having you. Um, all right, flipping us back into speaker view, and I'm going to go ahead and get into Miss uh, Jenna's bio so that we can get into our conversation. All right, Jenna Layden is a former global vice president for Whole Foods Market and has been leading teams and individuals through change and transformation for over 15 years. As an experiencer of supernatural phenomena and ET contact, Jenna has developed a passion for helping humans embrace a multi-dimensional multi reality without fear. Through those experiences, Jenna began remembering lives off of Earth and is now focused on her mission in this life to be a teacher of lost knowledge and wisdom from the stars. Now a shamanic practitioner and spiritual cosmic guide, Jenna connects ancient wisdom, new mind-body science, and universal spiritual teachings to assist people in navigating their healing and spiritual transformation. In early 2021, Jenna founded Star Family Wisdom, an online educational platform and community where she offers shamanic initiation and digital courses on spirituality, shamanism, ET, shamanism, comma, ET contact, and personal evolution. She is also a member of the Cherokee Nation 
in Oklahoma and is a passionate advocate for the indigenous communities and wisdom keepers who have been fierce protectors of humanity's or, um, original wisdom. And Jenna does have a link down below. Well, there's several links for Jenna down below, but she got, is giving us a little discount for people um, on the show today, uh, who are watching the show today. So please make sure you check out those links below. And also please give us a thumbs up if you are ready to fall in love with Jenna and her adventure of ET contact and reawakening. So, hey, Jenna, again, we're so excited to have you here. Um, let's get into who was Jenna before your awakening. So we can kind of have that bef before and after like that, that who, who you were experiencing yourself of, of in within your human identity. So we know where the cracks start to show up and, and the emergence happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a pretty big transformation because before all of this started, I was atheist. So my background was um, growing up as atheist. I had, you know, some religious um, family members. So had some exposure to that, but very much was, you know, logical, analytical, and like my mindset very much, you know, connected to anything science said, right? Like if the scientists said it was real, I trusted it. If they didn't, I, I didn't trust it. And, and I also, you know, as kind of that person, this atheist, analytical, logical minded person, I started my leadership career at a really young age. So, you know, I had an atypical um, kind of entry into my career. I did not graduate college. So for, for anyone out there um, who, you know, is curious about, you know, education and, and, you know, our systems here on earth, I can tell you it is not necessary to be successful in life as long as you focus on education, you know, and, and growing yourself. But I quit college to pursue my career with Whole Foods because I got a supervisor position at one point. I got an opportunity to be a team leader, a manager in one of the stores. And, and so that was kind of my, my, my passion back then was stepping into like leading people and helping teams. And I was having fun and learning more in that environment than I felt like I was in school at the time. So I quit college pursued my leadership career and and it was a really fast progression kind of up through the ranks you know at Whole Foods I ended up becoming you know global VP at the age of 30 and um, which you know isn't exactly normal especially not having graduated college and um, you know looking back now after some of the supernatural you know phenomena started to happen I I recognize that you know I, I had a lot more you know, like claircognizance and precognizance and, and, you know, intuitive abilities coming through on that journey with Whole Foods that I just wasn't that clued into at the time. And so, um, so it kind of took, you know, a big kind of bong on the head awakening experience, you know, for me to, to recognize the truth of our reality. So, so yeah, for years I was atheist, focused on leadership, focused on my mission at Whole Foods and just helping teams grow and develop. And, and, and then all of a sudden one day my reality changed. <laughs> Let's talk about that. What was the one day? Yeah. What, what was the, what was the big crack in the, um, in your consciousness where other things started to come through? Yeah. So, you know, my awakening was triggered by a relationship ending. So I had, you know, met a person who I thought was my person, like the love of my life. And, and we had a really strong, like energetic bond. And again, at the time I wasn't a spiritual person really. So I didn't have like spiritual words for that. I just knew there was this like deep connection. Right. And we ended up having to part ways for various reasons. We couldn't stay together and he had to leave, you know, leave town. He was going to go, you know, across the world world. And so I'm in this process of trying to figure out, you know, how I move on. And I was depressed and I'd always carried a lot of anxiety too in my life. So this didn't help, you know, I went into a pretty deep depression and what I now know is the dark night of the soul. You know, I was in that place of like my life's crumbling around me in this, this way, you know, and how do I move forward? You know, I'm just like devastated. And um, I start moving forward, right? I start doing that work just to move on and, you know, put that behind me. And then one day we run into each other on the other side of the country. And, and it was a moment where I questioned everything I had been taught about 
the nature of coincidences, about the nature of energy, because I knew a little bit about quantum physics and I knew quantum um, entanglement theory. And at the time I thought, I think we're experiencing like real life quantum entanglement. Like, I think that's what this is. I think we have some sort of energetic bond. Like if this is real, this might be an example of that. And so, so fast forward a few months after that, all of a sudden I started to stumble upon tons of information that started to validate that and started to teach me about near death experiences, past life experiences, you know, the nature of energy and and soul bonds and 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 then I started to have some, you know, bigger kind of extraordinary experiences because I was I was in this place of processing that breakup, processing that relationship ending, still trying to find meaning in it, you know, like why did this happen and 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 if we are connected, like what is this about and you know, I'd been doing, you know, some research as I started to access more information about near-death experiences and past life regressions. And I thought, well, this is really interesting. Like this, you know, these cases clearly are, you know, very credible in how they're being delivered. And these are very real experiences people are having. And I set the intention at that time to learn more about my connection with this person. I thought, well, you know, if, if we our souls and we have past lives and we have, you know, these other experiences, maybe we have a connection. And I I'd like to learn more about that at some point. And then one day when I was meditating, I was in a deep meditation. I had finally learned how to turn my mind off. I was in a really still place. I had two spontaneous past life visions pop in and it was so instantaneous, so fast that it was, it was not something my conscious, you know, logical mind, you know, could have produced, right? I, I could not have made that up. It was so fast and so instantaneous. And as soon as those visions popped in, I was able to connect the dots just instantaneously. I knew what they were. I knew how they connected to this life and the story that that was telling about this whole experience I was going through and why it was happening. And it was just this moment of, oh my God, you know, I think what I'm learning is is all completely accurate because I've just now accessed these memories that, you know, are nothing that would have been in my consciousness before, you know, in this, this life. And so, so, so so do tell us, do tell us what those past life memories were and how they, why they were important to you. And like, what, what was the significance? Why did those past life memories show up? Yeah. So since I was in that place of processing this connection with the ex and processing the breakup, um, what came through in those past lives were scenes of me with a a partner. One one of them was a me with a partner. And this was the the ex in this life Um, immediately knew who it was. And it was like World War Two era. So we were together. We had been married in World War in the World War II era. And he had had to go away to war and he never came home. That was the immediate download I got from that scene. And and it told me a lot about this the feeling of like abandonment and loss that I was having around that that relationship ending. And and then the second scene, which popped in super fast, was of me as a little girl in what would have maybe been like Civil War era. And my father, it was a male figure in that scene, my father was leaving to go to war. And didn't return. And so two instances of a deep soul bond with a a male, you know, in my life that I was close to who left and didn't return, which left me with these feelings of abandonment, right. And this deep sorrow. And then in this life, it was a pattern that repeated, but it repeated for a purpose because the purpose of that breakup and that, you know, parting ways was to crack me open. It was to trigger these memories. It was to trigger this understanding of how, you know, all these lives connect and how, you know, our, our karmic story plays out, you know, across our lives. And 
that was incredible. <laughs> how these past lives, how these concurrent lives, I mean, we call them past yeah, lives yeah. and future lives. They're concurrent, but they all echo into each other. Yes. Yes. You know, there's just all these fragments that are reflecting yes. back in this big fractal experience. Yes. And one of the things that came through for me when you're talking about that was like that in, in this lifetime, you at least got to have closure. Yes. So you got to mend those breaks and it yes. wasn't going to be something you had to carry forward. You're able to mend that yes. in incarnation. And that's so important, I think, you know, for all of us to, yeah, recognize is that, you know, we repeat these patterns if we don't heal them, right? And so, so we've got this opportunity to find meaning and find purpose and, you know, these events that play out in our lives so that we can heal from that and, and come back into our wholeness, you know, which is what that whole experience was partially about. Yeah, yeah, you have such loving energy. It's so nice. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, and so then bring us into your to how this these past life reconnections yeah. um, or integrations kind of um, allowed you kind of set the stage for you to have your antennas go up and <laughs> reconnect with your ET uh, family. Yeah. So you know, I think now after you know, all the experiences I've had and the learning that's happened over the last few years, I recognize that it's really important for us to have a strong spiritual foundation before we even attempt to understand the ET contact phenomenon, because it is facilitated by everything I just talked about. It's facilitated by quantum entanglement. It's facilitated by soul bonds and the soul connection we have, you know, with the ETs and the lives we've had together. And so, you know, I think that was a really important part of my like educational process that I was being taken through was to make sure I had a really strong foundation in my understanding of the nature of the soul, the mechanics of existence, right? How the soul comes into incarnations and how we do that with various soul groups and all of that. And so, so I had started to build this foundation, right? Of acknowledging, yeah, psychic, you know, abilities are real, you know, because I also had some psychic entanglement with, you know, this person I was really bonded with. Um, and so, so, you know, I'd started to process and acknowledge, right? It's all real, right? All, everything we're talking about here is real. Um, but I was still in a place of being a little skeptical about the ET, you know, phenomenon, right? You know, I was understanding that, yes, you know, we have this ability to, you know, have telepathy with people around us. We, you know, psychic abilities are real, soul, past life stuff, all that's real. And then one day I received a message. I was... Um, not in a meditation, but I was like struggling with something and I was like having an internal dialogue. You know how when you're kind of stewing over something or you're kind of, you know, you're in a fight with someone else in your head, you know, and you're like stewing over that and trying to process it. Well, I was in that place and all of a sudden this message came in and cut me off and like gave me directions <laughs> and basically was telling me I wasn't looking at the situation appropriately. I wasn't being forgiving. I wasn't being as loving as I should be. Right. They were helping me see it from a different perspective. But at the time I was like, where'd that message come from? I had, you know, at that point acknowledged, you know, I think we've got spirit guides and angels, you know, we're connected with, there's people in the spiritual realm. So maybe, maybe these were guides, maybe these were ancestors communicating to me. I don't know, but it was helpful. So I just kind of brushed it off and moved on. Well, that kept happening. And again, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that was interfering with my life in a negative way. It was helpful. So I wasn't scared, but I was confused about where it was coming from. And as my, you know, kind of spiritual research progressed, you know, I did get curious about the UFO phenomenon and, and some of the ET stuff that I had kind of started to learn about related to past lives that, um, you know, had come through some various, you know, cases. And so I was still highly skeptical though, right? Like, where's the evidence? You know, no one on the news has said it's real. So where's the evidence, <laughs> right? Right, right, right? So I was in that place and, um, but still very curious and open, you know, I've always been like open-minded, right. And willing to change my opinion when presented with new information. So all of a sudden, you know, in my research, it's like they were guiding me. It's like I was just being given the next piece of the puzzle, you know, as I was curious and open. And one day I um, opened 
John Mack's book, Passport to the Cosmos. And for anyone who doesn't know John Mack, he was a Harvard professor of psychiatry for many years. And in his later tenure, started working with ET contactees and people who had experienced abductions. And he took them through hypnotic regression where you know you can access that deep state of trance that helps us access more information from the field or our higher selves and so um, or any suppressed memories and so i was in the, like the first chapter of reading his book and very curious about this but a little scared too you know cuz i didn't quite know the full breadth you know of things i know now and so but i was open and i was reading the first chapter and i had the biggest emotional release of my life like tears just flooded out of me. And, and in that moment, I was like, oh my God, (laughs) have I been abducted? Like, what is this? Because I knew enough about the science of the mind to know that when trauma happens or when we experience something that is so far outside of our worldview, or we just can't psychologically process that in a healthy way, our subconscious will just shut that down. You know, it'll just suppress it to help us, you know, um, but eventually that causes problems that we have to, you know, unpack. And so all of a sudden I had this emotional release and I was like, oh my God, I've got, I've got memories that are suppressed. I've got something that is trying to come out of me. Like I just triggered something deep and, and I realized I needed to do a regression, you know, when that happened, because I realized there's more here that I've got to explore. And, and, you know, so that happened. I had been having all these messages. I had been having more like future visions as well. um, In addition to those past life visions. And so I'm putting all the pieces of this together and thinking, oh my God, something's going on here. You know, like all of a sudden I'm experiencing things I've never experienced before, but, but I'm still trying to figure out why, you know, and and so I was a little, little scared about the idea of going into a regression. I knew I needed to do it, but I was nervous about what was going to come out. Like I was nervous about what I was going to access because I do know that, you know, some of these experiences people have had have been very traumatic at first, you know, when you're accessing them and, and processing. So I, you know, put it off. I was like kind of, you know, procrastinating a little bit. So I was a little nervous and then a really fun experience happened. And that's what pushed me over the edge to just do it and and go into it and really open. So if anyone on your show or in the community knows um, Daryl Anka and his work with Bashar, you'll love this. Um, So if you don't know Daryl Anka and Bashar, Daryl is a channel for an ET being named Bashar. Bashar is a hybrid ET human who is a first contact specialist in contact with humans on earth to prepare us for open contact. When I first found Daryl's work, I was highly skeptical. Again, still back in that place of like, "Mm, I'm open, but I'm really skeptical. (laughs) And so I was watching his documentary, First Contact. I was like, I'm going to watch this. This looks interesting to me. And I want to learn more about this. And I was you know, open, but still my logical mind was taking over, right? My logical mind was like, no, no one else has said this is real yet. Right. And so I'm like halfway through this documentary and I get a little skeptical and I, I turn it off because you know, I'm, I'm at Whole Foods at this time. I'm, I, I was a VP, you know, when this was going on and busy and trying to keep up with that while all this was happening. And So I turn off the documentary and I had ordered food for dinner from a delivery service. And within seconds of turning the documentary off, my food got delivered at the front door and I got a text message, a pop-up on my phone that said, your food has been delivered by Bashar. (laughs) (laughs) Me and Linda both did the same thing. Our our jaws just went, (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, um... Bashar, are you there? Like, what, what's going on here? Like, did I just get contacted by Bashar? Like, is Bashar contacting me? Right, right. <laughs> and so, yeah, in that moment, I was like, okay, like that, you know, like that's not a coincidence. Come on, right? And 
And again, my logical mind was still trying to take over. So I was like, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look up how many people in the U.S. are named Bashar to know, like, know what the statistical odds of something like this are. And there you know, are not that many people, like 150 or something. Um, so anyway, that, that for me was one of those really fun moments where I was like, okay, I think I'm being contact. I think what's been happening is I'm partially being contacted, you know, and I'm, I'm being like offered this opportunity to open up to this. And, and so that was the moment I was like, okay, I'm going to go do the regression now. I I'm okay with this. Like, you know, this feels harmless enough, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then I went through with the regression, which opened many other doors. <laughs> okay. That is tremendous. One of the things I love, love, love is how, scientifically minded you are and you're like okay verify it verify it verify it (laughs) linda's that way too and i tend to be on the opposite side where it's like i i tend to empath things out and if i can feel it empathically then i then i lean into it and if i can't feel it then i am i'm like then i get skeptical yeah but um before we get into your regressions where it gets even juicier let's have miss linda hop in and jason hop in and have some questions and and whatnot well, for me, it's more of a comment of, yeah, I, I really appreciate that um, going in with the, the practical side. Cat knows I always kind of do go in with a very balanced. Now, what else could this be? Can yeah. This, can this be something else? Yeah, I think that's you important. Yeah. And, and so for me, that's part of the validation. And um, I'm curious how when when you did your past life you'll get into it so you don't have to answer it now any processes that you have found for people like me who are control freaks um (laughs) because i imagine there might be a little of that in you that um for hypnosis for doing that because i know i have i am a bugger for people who try to do that and so that's mine you can talk about that later um as I bring on Jason, somebody wants to know, Jason, if that's a bumblebee behind you. It is a bumblebee. Well, it's a bumblebee being. My favorite are the little arms that come out. His tummy. Those, yeah. And he's yeah. Like, what's it? What'd you name him? Bumble. How original, just, right? Wow. How original. What a, Bumble. What a stretch. Um, yeah. but, but he was a, was he a, um, a, a your guide or is he, uh, or I'm a, yeah. Your... And, it, and it, what's weird is I connected with him through a bumblebee that kept coming around me when I would go sit on the front porch that would just hover and it would just sit and he would come up and I'd like, don't, don't like, I need to see you like come from the front because I don't want to hurt you. You know, like, I don't want to, Oh, what is that? <laughs> and it would just for like two weeks, I'm telling you. And I know it was the same bumblebee. Like you can't tell me anything different. And it would just, he would just, and I'd be like, Hey, Bumble, you know, oh. I just, I, I would talk to him. And he would, he would enter. It was so weird. He would interact. And I was like, okay, you're trying to connect the dots, right? Like you're using this little bumblebee. To connect. Yeah, it was great. It was wild. Uh, but I am on the edge of my seat and covered in chill bumps, Jenna. Oh like, my gosh. I your love story it. is so good. And I love the fact that even though you, you know, you, you are this analytical type person that you were at least open to the possibility, like, okay, like I'm open to this. What's next? You know, like there's got, there's something you didn't just shut it down. And I feel like a lot of people in your position, uh, you know, that kind of have that scientific mind can have these incredible experiences, but then they just, they're like, nope, it's not possible. And I think this is a lesson to a lot of people um, and hopefully people watching that when these experiences happen, what's the worst case scenario if you just right. imagine, right? I always tell people imagination and intuition are like sisters, yeah. right? Like mm. uh, your imagination can allow the intuition to come in and then it's safe, right? Yeah. Even if you want to say, oh, it's just my imagination, but it sticks with you. So I love the fact that you were so open um, you know, to the possibility. And then lo and behold, what happens? Bashar delivers your food for you. You know, like, how do you, how, how can you not believe, you know, look, like you said, there's no coincidence and I'm not sure who it is, but somebody, and this is going to be a really lame reference, 
but somebody I keep hearing in my head, like whole foods brought you to your whole self. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, um, like yeah. it's when I watched the intro video that Kat posted, like the little three minute video, it was the first time I got it. And I've heard it like five times now. Oh, I love um, that. Yeah. So it's so fascinating. And I love that you bring this, um, you bring this other viewpoint because there's a lot of people in the community that are just wholeheartedly full believers, you know, and it's going to be, I know, I know for a fact that there are, there's going to be someone that watches this video and they're going to be like, you know, she's just like me, but she's not this extra woo woo burning candles and incense everywhere. Like, and they're going to see how impactful this has been for you. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just super grateful to be a part of you sharing your conversation. And I'm telling you, you are surrounded right now. Your left side, I know that there's one of them is like, I think it's your left side. It's, you're right on my camera. So it's your left side. Yeah. You've got so much <laughs> of the energy behind you right now. It's crazy. I can feel it too. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I think it, yeah, it's so important that we don't just shut out things when they happen. Right. It's like, we need to ask questions and be curious. We have to be discerning. Right. Like I've always been a person that even now, right. Like I'm open to a lot more than I used to be, but you know, if it's just one person saying something like I'm going to honor their experience, but, but it doesn't mean I'm going to change my full belief system. It takes a lot for me to change my belief system, but I, but I'm also open to allowing, you know, a lot more information to influence you know, that. And, and I think, yeah, we just have to ask questions and be curious. And I think, you know, a lot of times we shut down this stuff or we shut out experiences that have happened out of fear, right? Because we also live in a world that has been traumatized and violent. And we have all taken on that, that wound, right? We have, we all come into this world with these wounds from the culture, right? That we are raised in and from the ancestral trauma of our parents. And, and so we all have, have had to work on, you know, our nervous system regulation and moving out of the fight or flight response and learning how to regulate that so that, you know, we can be open and balanced in our approach to, you know, absorbing information. And that, you know, that was my journey, you know, was having to move through that fear and having to allow myself to like acknowledge, okay, I'm like feeling fear around all of this. Like I'm feeling fear about what's happening to me, but I'm also, I'm not going to let that take over, right? I'm going to sit with it and I'm going to move through it and ask, ask questions, you know, and then mm-hmm. learn about the traumas I have that might have contributed to that fear response. And so, so yeah, I think when these, ex- any experience happens, you know, for you, it's like this invitation to dig deep on our healing path, you know? Yeah. And I think that, you know, having that curiosity, And at least being open to the possibility. I think a lot of times in this community, our fear is I'm I'm going crazy. You know, I'm bipolar. I'm schizophrenic. Like what's, and that's not to take away. I mean, that is a real, you know, that's a real illness. Um, But, you know, if you've never had a history of that and then these things start happening, I know I I was like, am I going crazy? Yeah. Why is it every time I'm I'm around people, like I'm just getting all this stuff, but then it, if you at least have the curiosity and you're open, you allow the synchronicities and the coincidences to happen that validate. And then, you know, like the Bashar experience, like there's, there's no way, right. There's no way that that you're not crazy with people. You're not crazy, right. (laughs) Embrace it. Like have an imagine, have the imaginary conversation. What's the worst thing that can happen. I also think it's really interesting that, and normal for other people, your progression, right? It starts off with, oh, well, maybe soulmates are real. Maybe, oh, then it goes to like past life stuff. Oh, yeah. then I'm getting these messages. And like, it's always ET contact is like the last yes. step on the chain. The barrier, it's like they're aware. Barrier. Yeah. And they they're, they baby step us to yes. where it gives us a chance to get more comfortable. Okay, this is a possibility. And then, oh, here's the next step. Oh, here's the next yeah. step. Here's the next step. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah, we awesome. Have to evolve and expand our consciousness, you know, before yeah. we can get to a point where we can really understand how, how and why it's happening. Yeah. So I, I recognize now, you know, a lot of, yeah, my progression was 
very much meant to be in that way. It's, and it, it is like, you know, the way the universe works, it's like, you know, as you get curious and you take that next step and you say yes, right. To learning mm-hmm. more, then you're going to unlock the next right piece of the puzzle. And, and then the next thing shows up that gives you the opportunity to take the fork in the road, right? Are you going to say yes to this? Or are you going to say no to it? Right. And then you just continue to progress and progress in your evolution. And it's a process, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, I wanted to really honor how you said like knowing yourself is so important before you make these other leaps, because I feel like there's so many people in the community who are like, once I have easy contact, I'll be happy, you know, then I'll be okay. Once disclosure happens, I'll be able to calm down. And everything is pinned on this external mm-hmm. something, you know, fill in the blank, it can, it can shift and change. And it's always about your inner connection to yourself first, because if you don't have that foundation to grow from, then yeah, you're going to be externally minded. When the ETs out there come here and talk to me then versus, well, the ETs are already connected to you, but let yourself take care of your home base first and get your your house in in, in order. Um, And then, you know, honor your, your rite of passage. And, you know, it's not going to be on your demand. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you have to raise our vibration too, right? Like, right. like because of the dimension, you know, we're operating in, you know, a lot of our ET friends are operating in a slightly higher dimension. And so, so energetically we're different in that way. Right. And so, so it's not like they can just show up, you know, right in front of us and, 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 and harmonize in the way that we would want to. We have to keep evolving and, and we, he, we raise our vibration through healing, right? Through yeah. com- coming into our wholeness through the healing process and through unpacking and unwinding, you know, all those limiting beliefs and traumas and wounds that we've had. And, and then, then we're moving into a space where that sort of stuff can happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so let's, let's get into that. And then let's, let's get into your regression and, and that connection and feel free to speak to Linda's question about, yeah. you know, cause I've, I've done try to do hypnotherapy too. And I've only had one and it was like accident. I mean, there, it was like one years ago where I had spontaneous memories of incarnations and whatnot. My, someone was trying to, they were teaching hypnosis to their friend. And so I was a subject and it was not planned. I had these experiences that happened, but since then people tried to hypnotize me. And it's like, I had the same thing with Linda where I'm like, what the, what the bleep are you doing? <laughs> like, like they can't get me there. So yeah. if you can tell us, you know, how that might work for a more, a, a mind that's in resistance and then going mm-hmm. to experience, that would be great. Yeah. That, so I, yeah, I think that's a great place to start because my mind was so overactive for so many years that, you know, part of my journey and even getting to the point where I could do a regression was this journey with meditation and learning how to turn my mind off because I think I'd referenced, I had a lot, a lot of anxiety, you know, for so many years, which I recognize now was partially because of what I was doing at Whole Foods and taking on a lot of responsibility at a young age, but also because, I didn't quite feel at home here. Like I didn't feel right here, you know, like a lot of stuff just gave me anxiety about this place, you know? And so um, that, and that, you know, gets your mind just like turning and being overactive. And there were so many years, like I, I had trouble sleeping, you know, because of my mind being overactive. So I went through about two years of like really solidly working on a mindfulness and meditation practice before I did a regression. And I know I would not have been able to do a regression successfully if I hadn't done that, because even then my, you know, the, my left brain was kind of fighting it a little bit at the beginning. So I'll I'll share what that was like, but, um, but, you know, it was a slow process. Like it literally took me a year to learn how to turn my mind off. And it was in like all the small moments throughout the day doing meditative exercises, right? Like if my mind was starting to go down a certain train of thought, pulling it back, right. And, and, and training my mind, training how my brain was operating. And so, and that feels like work at first, you know, like when you, 
are learning to meditate or trying to sit down to meditate, it doesn't feel good at first, right? Because your mind is doing stuff and, and you can't turn your mind off at first. And so, so it, for some people, that's a, a long process of just training, you know, over and over and over every single day, you know, in as much as, in as many moments as you can, you know, coming back to a place of center and pulling your mind back, you know, to a mantra or whatever it is. And um, on our podcast, the Star Family Wisdom one, we talk a little bit about that too, and, and more detail about my journey with that. Cause that was hard, you know, that was hard to get to that place. But by the time I, you know, did the regression, I had successfully, you know, gotten to a place where I could sit in meditation and turn my mind off and not have stuff happening, you know, and, and, and you need to be there, you know, for a regression to take place because what's happening is, you know, the therapist is attempting to help you turn off your left brain, right? Like you're attempting to just shut down the left brain so that information from your higher self can flood through your right brain. And, and it's a very interesting sensation because, you know, you're conscious of what's going on. And the best kind of example I have for it, I guess, is it's almost like I was over here watching my watching these words come out of my mouth, like just information just started coming out. And so there'd be moments where it's like, I was watching myself and being like, Whoa, that was weird, (laughs) you know, but, but you have to be in, you have to be able to be in a space of just letting it flow and not questioning it, not, you know, trying to analyze it, not trying to control it. Right. Cause that's our left brain doing that. And so, um, and because of how we've been raised and, you know, the environment we live in, right. Most of us are overactive in our left brain. So it's, it's just, just this process of, you know, rebalancing between your left and right brain. And then, you know, being able to calm yourself and get into a meditative state so that the therapist can help that information flow through you. So, so in the first, you know, 15 minutes of my regression, I fought it a little bit, you know, my left brain was like, no, (laughs) this is weird. Um, And so, so it took, you know, probably 15 to 20 minutes of the therapist really working on me to get me in a, a, you know, more regressed state. And then when I was in kind of a lighter state of hypnosis, um, which was more like the theta brainwave state, that's when I started to access some additional past life memories. And, and it, and it's such an interesting sensation again, because this information is just flowing through you, but it's nothing you would have made up, you know? So the first life that came through me that I was experiencing was me as a messenger boy in ancient Egypt. And that was really cool. So I had, um, it was a, a life where, you know, I wasn't really educated. It was a really simple life. I was kind of poor, but I worked for the library of Alexandria and I worked for someone delivering messages from the library to other important people in the town. And in that life, I watched the library of Alexandria burn when the Romans burned it down. And so that was wild. And then the next life was me as um, a leader and a teacher of initiates in ancient Greece. So similar to what I'm doing with Star Family Wisdom now, where I'm teaching the mysteries of the universe and kind of helping initiate people into um, uh, spiritual wisdom and, and all of this. I was doing that in ancient Greece. And And then, you know, after we went through those past lives, the therapist, you know, had gotten me in a deep enough state of trance that he asked to speak directly to my subconscious. And anyone who's familiar with the QHHT kind of regression, that's what this was. So that was coined by Dolores Cannon. She learned that not only can you access past life memories in the hypnosis process, but a therapist can really just access your higher self, access your subconscious mind and and ask it questions directly. And so, so we got to that point in the regression with it, where the therapist started asking my subconscious questions. I had brought a list of questions that I wanted answers on. And a lot of those were related to all these experiences that had happened, right? The past life, you know, visions I'd had some future visions, the messages that I had been receiving, the John Mack book, you know, emotional release thing, the Bashar contact. Like I wanted to know like one, what is all that? And is it ET contact? What's happening? You know? So we went through a whole list of questions on that. And, 
And it was beautiful, you know, the, the confirmation that I was getting about, you know, who I am and where I'm from and these, this connection that I have with ETs. And, um, and so, so the therapist was asking, you know, a lot about those experiences and yes, the messages were coming from ETs that I'm in contact with. And yes, the Bashar, you know, situation was a contact moment. And, and what came through about that one was that I was being stubborn. So my higher self said that um, the reason that happened was because I was supposed to finish the documentary. I was being stubborn and I was not giving it, you know, an op opportunity, you know, to, um, educate me. And so I had to finish, you know, my education on that. And so, um, so there were moments where, you know, my subconscious almost like scolded me. I got told I needed to meditate more. So 30 minutes a day, minimum meditation. And the reason I got told is because that sinks the hemispheres of your brain. It, it turns on the powers of your mind, your psychic abilities. It helps you, you know, connect. It helps you align with your higher self, which then in turn helps you just align with the flow of your life and what you're supposed to be doing in life. And then after we got through some of those questions, um, about all you know, the, the supernatural stuff that had been happening, then something different happened. So when the therapist is talking directly to your subconscious, you're answering in third person. So I was answering as like an objective party about myself. So I would, the words coming out of my mouth were, Jenna needs to meditate more because of X, Y, and Z. That's what it was. But then something changed because I was getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the state of trance. And then all of a sudden, the answers changed to we, we have been blah, blah, blah. And the therapist says, who is we? And the answer was, we have always been watching and supporting. And he asked again, you know, like, who, who is we? And the the answer was that they who started these beings started to channel through me. That's what this was. And they answered that they are my star family, the ETs that I've been in contact with and that they are part of my soul group and that we have a soul bond, a soul connection. They said that I, Prior to this series of incarnations on earth, I lived on a starship. So I've had that experience. Um, and that the reason I had the emotional release when reading John Mack's book is because it triggered memories of home. Because for my soul, home feels like that, that those civilizations I'm most used to, right? So I'm not as used to incarnating on earth. I'm more used to incarnating with the mantis civilization I now know. And, and these are the ETs I was in contact with. And they also shared that um, I'm here with two souls from home. So rather than incarnating with my full soul group here on earth, our soul, my soul group is split. So I have two souls here with me. So there's three of us here on earth right now. And the rest are in our civilization back home. And so it was just this in really interesting experience. And I don't, I didn't remember a lot of this part because I was in a really deep state of trance, but, you know, I have the recording. Um, people can um, hear a couple of excerpts of that on, on the Star Family Wisdom YouTube channel. We'll put some more on there at some point because um, I have it recorded and you can tell the difference, you know, in the tone of voice, you can, um, you know, in, in listening back to it, it was very clear, you know, all of a sudden this other entity, these other beings took over and they were talking through me. And that was kind of profound, you know, to have that experience. And it really validated a lot of what had already been happening. And it helped me get more comfortable with this idea of being in contact. And um, they also validated a message that had come through at the end of 2019. So this was one of those moments where I'd had a message interrupt me. It was around New Year's of 2019. And, you know, on this path, on this journey, I had already been starting to sense that, you know, maybe I'm supposed to 
take all of this and apply like my leadership abilities in a different way someday. Like maybe I'm supposed to leave Whole Foods at some point and do something with this, right? And so I was already getting that feeling, but I wasn't quite sure how and and you know what it would be about. And um, and so I was doing some just New Year's resolution stuff, writing down ideas about the next year and thinking gosh, am I supposed to leave Whole Foods in 2020? Like, you know, my life is changing so fast and what am I supposed to do with all this? And I got a message in my head from them that said, no, your leadership will be needed next year. And then we went into the pandemic. So at the time, you know, I was like, well, okay, I guess I'm not leaving Whole Foods in 2020. I guess I'm supposed to stay. But then all of a sudden, you know, this major pandemic happened and, you know, my leadership was needed. Like I definitely needed to be there to help the team through all of that. So they knew that I, you know, I needed to stay through that. And then in the regression, they validated, they said that I would be leaving at the beginning of 2021 and that it was, it was getting close to time and that I should, you know, be preparing for that. Yeah, hop in, Linda. So um, we have two questions. The first one, someone wants to know what type of meditation you do. Good question. So, you know, I did a lot of different types to begin with. You know, if you're brand new to it, using some sort of app, you know, where you're getting guided meditations is really helpful, right? Because that helps pull your, your mind back to where it needs to be. And so once I did that for a while and just kind of got used to the process, then I came up with some of my own mantras because, you know, mantras are just a really easy way to pull the mind back to something, you know, anchor it on something. And so I would use like, I am love, I am peace, I am healing, I am whole, you know, whatever, you know, felt right that day. And, and in my my meditation, I would just focus on breathing, you know, just focusing on the breath. Cause when you're focusing on the breath, that's, it's harder for your mind to be doing other things. And then I would just focus on the mantra, you know, just say the mantra over and over, maybe come to a place of stillness, try to turn my mind off. Then if it wandered, come back to the mantra. And so it was just being in that place and in that process over and over, you know, and, and sitting there, you know, even when it felt a little uncomfortable and, 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 and forcing yourself into that new routine. And so, so now my meditation practice looks a little different. I still say affirmations and mantras to myself every day. Cause I also know, you know, our, the programming, you know, we give our mind is so important, but I also, you know, really do <clears throat> just sit in stillness and, and allow my mind to, you know, harmonize, you know, the hemispheres of my brain to harmonize and go into a place of no thoughts. But again, it's a journey, you know, to get there. Um, and I like I like listening to um, different music sometimes, like binaural beats or, um, you know, maybe like some Native American flute music or something like that, that, um, again, just helps get your brain in a more relaxed, altered state of consciousness. You can find, you know, music on Apple or Spotify that is like theta brainwave music and that's going to help sync up your brain with you know the frequency and and get yourself into a more meditative state and so you know you just got to be gentle with yourself as you're going through the process right cuz you know sometimes when we get quiet that's when stuff comes up you know that's when all of our 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 shadow stuff you know wants to show up and and that's okay like that's normal you know you just have to let let that happen and acknowledge it, you know, and, and send yourself love, you know, when that's happening. How long did you, when you first started, how long were your meditation sessions versus now? Yeah, good question. So, you know, at the beginning, it was like, good luck if I could meditate for two minutes, (laughs) you know? And so, so you like, you celebrate the wins, you know, when you, when you get to a point where it's like, oh my God, I turned my mind off for two minutes, you know, celebrate it. Um, and then work on three minutes the next day, you know, and just kind of build up. And so that's what it was for me for a long time was just celebrating those small moments of being able to sit there and turn my mind off now. And it depends on the day, you know, like no matter how far along we get in our journey and how, you know, we progress, we're always going to be, 
you know, experiencing new things that then force us to come back and practice again, you know, and, and remember and recalibrate. And so, you know, now I, you know, I can sit for 20, 30 minutes and be in a pretty solid, you know, meditative state. And that's also what, you know, facilitates some of the contact, you know, and, and the downloads and, um, you know, some of the channeling that I've done, even on star family wisdom, you know, part of, you know, what has been produced on star family wisdom has been from, you know, channeling and just like allowing it to come through me. And and that's happened because I'm able to turn my mind off for longer, but, you know, there's still a day here and there where it's harder, you know, and you've got to work on it again, um, or do a different type of meditation, like go walking in nature, you know, and just look at the trees and connect with the flowers. Like that's a beautiful way to, to get your, your brain to turn off, you know, um, other, you know, things that are happening. So there's a lot of ways you can meditate. It doesn't have to be just sitting there in pure silence. Um, but yeah, you know, I've gone from, one or two minutes of it to now, you know, being able to sit for a pretty long time. And, and, you know, even though it's work at first and it feels like it, you know, for, you know, for the first, you know, few months as you're working on it, it's like, oh gosh, this is, this is hard. But once you get to the place of really being able to turn your mind off, oh my God, like the peace you can find is incredible. (laughs) You know, like, like I, like I used to have to smoke pot, you know, to like sleep at night. Cause I couldn't turn my mind off. Yeah. I still do sometimes, but you know, like I, <laughs> you know, that was like a big thing. Like I just couldn't turn my mind off, but now to be able to just like sit there and not have, you know, mean voice, you know, talk to myself in mean ways or not have the anxiety stirring, like that's a beautiful place to be, you know? And, and, and I will say part of my journey was also implementing like cognitive behavioral therapy processes, right? Because I had, um, you know, I had like neural networks, right? Like brain programming that was, you know, around lack scarcity, you know, the sense of being abandoned, right. Um, this worry about worst case scenario stuff all the time. Like I was kind of in that place, you know, for a while. And so, you know, there's processes you can go through to, to retrain your brain, to reframe those beliefs, right. To more productive, healthy beliefs. And so, you know, if you're kind of struggling with getting into a still calm meditative place, going through some of those exercises might be very helpful before you attempt, you know, a a real meditation practice. Uh, I really appreciate you letting people know that you weren't perfect when you started and that two minutes was perfect. Yeah. That was what was needed at that time. That's where, that's where you could go because I think there's so much of this, you've got to go all the way, you've got to be perfect when you first start it. you know, you should start out at 20 minutes when that is hard. Yeah, to start out, you that's know, an unrealistic is a lot. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And then, you know, so, so being able to build up to that just, and it's amazing how two minutes can change your entire day. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, and just doing two minutes throughout the day. Yeah, you know, that, that mindful meditation yeah. for two minutes can be amazing and shifting your energy completely. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm really impressed with, and I think that's part of this massive shift that's taking place is the shift of left brain people really shifting more towards their intuitive abilities, yeah. going from a very logical brain and very um, corporate mind to to where we are now and making that the norm yeah and i'm curious because through this whole thing you're still working for whole foods i know how hard it was for me to have this shift taking place for me at hewlett packard when i worked there and in it right and and mine it got so uncomfortable it was like if you stay here linda for another year you will be dead yeah it's just at that point how did one, how did you balance those two worlds as you're going through it? And did anyone around you in your team know what you were going through, who you were? Good question. Or did you have this other persona that you had with them? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, how you see me showing up here is how I would show up with my team, but some of the 
you know, supernatural ET stuff that was going on. I wasn't sharing at the time because I was still trying to figure it out, you know, and, and again, it's important to me to be grounded, to not be, you know, sharing a lot of fantastical stuff that um, might not be grounded, you know, in reality. And so it, it was important to me to get really clear on what was happening and, and to be able to kind of put all the pieces together, balancing the science and the spiritual before I started talking about this, you know, with people. So, um, so there were aspects, you know, of what was going on that some people knew, but, but on the whole, you know, I, I did keep, you know, a lot of this private until I had done the integration work because, you know, we also live in a culture where um, this sort of stuff is not celebrated, right? As it is questioned, it is sometimes ridiculed and that is not okay, and I also didn't want to subject myself unnecessarily to that, right? Until I could get to a point where I felt really comfortable and grounded in what I know and in what I know the truth is. And so, so now I feel totally comfortable talking on it. But at the time, you know, I also didn't want the, the questioning and the ridicule happening in a way that could potentially, you know, affect how I was processing and integrating and understanding it all. And so, so, you know, I did share with, you know, like my mom, you know, along the way is this was happening um, because we're really close. It's just the two of us in our family. And, and, you know, I wanted to be open with her, but that was hard, you know, like her reactions at times were difficult for both of us, you know, but again, she was open-minded enough to go along on the journey and, um, you know, ask some hard questions at times, but, but be there for me and, and, and be open, you know, to supporting me, no matter what her belief system was, um, so, yeah, you know, I think the the process of like trying to balance both worlds is hard, you know, when you're in that place, like that's just hard. And it did require me to take a little step back, you know, from some of the social stuff, you know, I was a part of, um, you know, I like did less happy hours and that sort of stuff because I needed time to myself to just process and read and research and try to validate, you know, what was happening and, 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 and put the pieces of the puzzle together. And so when you, and, and when you're in, in that healing work, like you need time alone, like, you know, you can't be out socializing all the time, right. You're that that's, you know, that's basically just preventing you from doing that work. And so, so I had to take a step back from some of that for a while, while I was, you know, processing and, um, and, you know, I was also very clear on the fact that, you know, what I was doing at Whole Foods as a leader was also part of my mission, you know, like there were times, you know, in the past where I wasn't clear that I even had a mission in this life. I just felt very strongly that I was there for the right reason and I, I wanted to help in the ways I could help. And so, so I, you know, I stayed focused on that when I was there. And then when I wasn't at Whole Foods, I was you know, trying to unpack all of this and figure out what was going on. And, and, you know, in those corporate cultures, like you said, Linda, it's so left brain, right? It's so, what does the analytics say, right? Like what's the data say? And we're going to make decisions off of that. I was lucky at Whole Foods to be in an environment where, you know, more people were open to intuition, and there was a little bit, a little bit more of that, you know, that played into how we navigated our environment as a team and how we worked together. But, you know, it's still very, it's a corporate structure. And so there's still very much that left brain. And, and I think what is fun for me now is seeing that we need both, right? In all of our institutions and in our, you know, businesses and our lives, right? we've got to have both because it, it's all about the balance between the left and the right brain and what has gotten our culture and our civilization so out of whack is not, you know, accepting and trusting in the intuitive faculties that we have and not honoring the divine feminine qualities, right. That can balance the masculine and, and we need to bring all of that together. And then that's okay for businesses to do too, you know? So, um, so now, you know, even with star family wisdom and my business partner, you know, we have a lot of conversations about that, right? Like, 
let's look at the data. Let's do our research. Let's make sure we're structured. Let's make sure we're applying our masculine left brain, you know, abilities, but let's also trust our intuition and let's, let's let ourselves be guided, you know, by synchronicity and let's let ourselves, you know, feel flow and follow our passion. Right. And so when those two come together, it can be really beautiful, but yeah, most of the corporate world isn't quite there. <laughs> and I, I find it fascinating that we have this need and, and we do, I mean, it's very legit to protect who we are in that environment. And yet I know someone who worked at Whole Foods, I don't know if she still does, who is incredibly intuitive, who is just a very gifted person who hid it because she didn't want anybody to know. She was high up enough that you probably knew her. And what would it have done had you guys known each other, not been hiding. And I hope at some point we get to that place Me too, where it's safe for people to be all of who they are in the corporate world, because what kind of companies could we have then? You know, we might actually get to people first. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, one of my passions now. And, and one thing I hope, you know, to contribute to in the world is educating, you know, leaders out in the world on this, right. That it's okay to have both and that we need to embrace it. Right. When we do have people with those intuitive gifts, like we need to trust that and bring that into the conversation. Right. Cause that's so important. Like there were so many times at whole foods, I would just know, right. Like I would just know we needed to go down a certain path and we definitely shouldn't go down that path, but I couldn't articulate right? Like the logic behind it. Right. And so, but it was, it was an intuition. And and luckily, because I was in a leadership position, there were times I was able to just make a call, you know, and follow that intuition. But, but, but at the time I also didn't fully know that that's what was happening. And I think, yeah, the more we lean into that, as a culture and trust, yeah, our gut instinct, right. And our, our feelings, but validate it, you know, with other, you know, information and other people's intuition because group intuition, super powerful, right. When you harness the, the intuition of a lot of people um, like that can be so transformative for us. So, yeah, I, I hope that more and more, you know, people in leadership positions and positions of authority, honor that and trust that. And and that will only happen when people in those positions allow ego to get out of the way, right? When when they do their healing, right? Which is why the healing work for all of us is so important because we can only allow that, you know, to manifest if, if, you know, we're not trying to control and we're not in a place of, you know, power grabbing. And if we're, you know, not in a place of money over people, right? Like or it's it's, collaboration instead yeah. of competition. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's my model is like collaboration over competition. Yes. Um, Jason Hoppin, did you have reflection? Yeah. Questions? Well, first and foremost, love to your mother. Mm. You know, like my mother is my biggest supporter to where she's like, Jason, you need to talk to this person. Jason, can can you, can you come here with this? Like, it's so nice having, it's so nice having that support from someone that you care about and someone whose opinion that, you know, you, it's, it's, it's it's love to your mother. I do have a question because you kind of, you kind of confirmed information that I was getting about there being two others. And so Mm -hmm. when you were talking about there's two others from your soul group that are currently incarnated, um, like I'll go ahead and tell you, I feel like they are both female. So I feel like all three of you are female, like in a female body. Okay. So I'm, I'm wondering if, do you think that you'll ever meet them? Right. Do you think that you'll ever physically interact with them? I think I have. <clears throat> yes. So last year, one of them is a woman named Nadi Hana, and I'm sharing her name because um, people will hear her on our podcast and she's part of Star Family Wisdom. But last year I got invited to be a part of a project, like a documentary thing about ET contact. And so I started, you know, doing like Zoom meetings with these people and I met this woman named Nadi and she was going to interview me as part of the project. And in our first meeting, we recognized each other and we both 
were moving to Sedona, Arizona at the exact same time. That was another thing that happened over the last year. I left Whole Foods in February of 2021 and was guided to Sedona multiple times and then was given like pretty clear confirmation that I was supposed to make the move here. And Naughty also moved here at the same time and we're from the same ship. So we've worked together and um, yeah. So like, that was a, it, like incredible to have that moment of, oh, wow. I think, I think our, we have this, I think this connection is that I think she's one of, you know, the people from the soul group, the other person I've been somewhat unclear on it's I've narrowed it down between two people. I thought it might've been the ex or it might be the woman that is my co-host on the Star Family Wisdom podcast, Sinead, who I also met last year and who is here in Sedona with me right now. So, so there's there have definitely been a few of these like really divine synchronistic connections that have happened over the last year as I said yes to becoming the full me, as I said yes to just being who I am and honoring this and sharing it, you know, with the world these people showed up and now this, you know, is evolving in a really cool way. So I think that might be them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you, like, I'm going to nudge you towards the two is one dark haired and one light haired, like two different, there's there's two female energies Mm -hmm. that I feel like, and then I have a kind of a silly question. Okay. So since you're reckon you're, you know, you're connecting to these mantis, these galactic mantis energies, do you find yourself having experiences where, our in, insect praying mantises, like you see them a lot, like th- has that interaction increased? That has happened. Yeah. 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 So that was kind of a shock to find out that it was the mantis beings in my uh, first regression. We didn't learn exactly who they were. We just learned that, yes, they were ETs. Yes. They were part of my soul family. So it was after the regression through some other, you know, work I've done a couple other small regressions, meditations, um, that more confirmation started to come and imagine my shock when I was like, Oh, I'm connected to the mantis bee. <laughs> Like, didn't see that coming. Um, but because, yeah, like, you know, we we come up with these biases, right, of who we think we're going to be connected to. And um, yeah, just didn't think that would happen. But uh, they, they, you know, I think have... Um, you know, they've shown up for me in various ways. So yes, I've seen more, you know, mantis just kind of in the wild. Uh, When I first got to Sedona, I bought um, a new like animal, like spirit animal oracle deck and um, decided to, you know, check in with that one day. Did not know that one of the um, animals was a mantis, a praying mantis, and immediately got that card multiple times. Um, so yeah, they've, they've definitely been more present and, you know, I shared with you all before, you know, we got on the live stream that I'm working on more conscious contact, right? Because, you know, again, as we evolve, you know, we're not always in a place to like have face-to-face contact, right? Like that can still be very startling for our system as a human. And so, you know, again, most of what I have accessed, in memory and that sort of thing has been through regression type states. Um, But, you know, in Sedona, there has even been a a day or a a morning where as I was waking up, I saw their faces. I I saw Mm -hmm. two mantis, you know, with me and that was a visitation, you know, night that had happened. And so, so there's, uh, there's more contact that's occurring, you know, now that I'm, further along, you know, on the path. Um, yeah. And actually two nights ago, we had a pretty significant contact. So Nadi and Sinead were here um, and Nadi teaches sacred geometry and we're actually launching sacred geometry courses on star family wisdom really soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, but she, she was really first activated by crop circles. So she also teaches about crop circles. And so she did a presentation for the two of us to practice, you know, a presentation. And so we had an hour long crop circle meditation and presentation that she did on what was that Thursday night. And oh my gosh, like towards the end of it, 
I started having, you know, these big emotional releases. Sinead did too. We knew something was starting to happen. There was some sort of connection forming, you know, in a deeper way. And then that night we both had visitations and had some pretty significant like downloads of information, like messages that were shared. I'm not remembering all the details of it very clearly, um, except for, you know, remembering there was a presence with me and what this message was because it was so like direct. It was like, do not forget this. And I actually actually like got up in the middle of the night and sent myself, you know, an email with what the message was. Um, so I wouldn't What's that message. Angela Anderson's in our, uh, our live stream. She's one of our, <laughs> our co-hosts as well. And she was like, what's their, you know, what's their core message? And it sounds like this is what you're, yeah. maybe you jotted down for us. Yeah. Oh, there, for everybody. There so many, you know, the, um, I'll, I'll share kind of uh, a broader like set of their messages and I'll, I'll share what the one was the other night. Cause it was more like specific, I think to me and my journey, but they, you know, in, in all of the like ways I've been guided and the downloads that have happened, it's almost like they have been syncing up this like story for me to tell. And some of the spiritual teachings that, you know, I teach on star family wisdom and, um, that I share about in our UFO, um, and contact course are about this, like really holistic set of like spiritual realizations about how the universe works, about our oneness, about our ability to create our reality, about our ability to use our minds and direct consciousness in certain ways to produce, you know, the right circumstances that we want. You know, they teach about, um, you know, all of the the healing, you know, work and, and shamanic practice um, that, you know, I guide people um, through on Star Family Wisdom. And so they have downloaded so much information around like all of that around just how our reality works about the nature of energy and um, consciousness and um, spiritual law. Like last year I sat down and uh, 10 spiritual laws of the universe course came out of me, right. From a former atheist, <laughs> like that's a wild. And so, so they, you know, they, they download these messages in that way. Sometimes, like if I'm just sitting at the computer and typing and producing something, it is like they take over almost. Um, and then sometimes, you know, it's like shorter, you know, messages that are more directed um, for me, but the other night, the, and the, what's so interesting about this, it was one very specific like phrase that they wanted me to follow up on and learn about. And I think I'm supposed to watch a movie. And so I haven't done this, you know, yet. And I ha I'm still unpacking elements of um, what was occurring over the last 48 hours. But the message was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I've never seen that's a movie. I've never seen that yeah. movie. I'm not familiar really with it. I Googled it you know, that yesterday morning just to learn like a little bit, like what's it about. And so there's something there I'm supposed to unpack. And, and from what I understand, you know, it's kind of about spiritual warriors, right. And stepping onto the path of like spiritual mastery. And, um, and so, you know, I think, I think it, you know, it has a personal meaning for me, but it also has like a broader meaning, meaning around us all stepping onto the path of spiritual mastery and working towards, um, you know, embodying, right, that, um, that power and like activating our internal power. And, and, you know, we're living in a, a time that is, you know, a really transformative time on the planet, you know, like we're at a critical place as a civilization and, and, it is important for us all to be on that path to be able to bridge our, you know, where we're at currently as a civilization to our future civilization, right? Because we cannot continue to evolve in the way we've been evolving without that spiritual foundation, um, or we're just going to go down a path we don't want to go down, you know? So I think it, you know, it has that meaning as well for anyone who's listening. Hopping, Linda. I know Linda had an experience with um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I'm just so laughing here in the background because, um, yeah, that was my my Kundalini awakening was during uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I so love it. A good movie. Okay, so I think everyone's supposed to watch it. <laughs> everyone. 
just watch it. I wasn't even stoned. It was just <laughs> an amazing experience. No. So, yeah. Easiest Kundalini awakening ever. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, you're, you're definitely meant to watch it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's 1122 oh, my time right now. So really quickly, yeah. as you were talking about um, your co-host, I had just this downpouring of energy mm-hmm. come to me mm-hmm. for what it's worth. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, we we feel that our meeting was really synchronistic, you know, and that we we were meant to to meet to do what we're doing now, you know, to produce, you know, the courses and programs on Star Family Wisdom and um, to host our show as well. She's a former um, special needs educator. She's Canadian and she's also a deaf person. And so um, she she has had a really interesting and profound journey, you know, in her own way. And she's really passionate about supporting parents and kids, you know, who are going through this, right? Because we've got a lot of kids, you know, showing up on the planet who are advanced souls who, um, you know, are accessing more of themselves, right? We're bringing more of our soul energy into our bodies now that we're evolving as humans. And so, you know, there's probably a lot of parents out there who have kids, you know, with uh, what seem to be special abilities and that is because they do have special abilities, right? Like they, they are more uninhibited, right? They have, you know, access to more of their full soul energy and, um, and we've got to nurture that. And she's really, really passionate about, about that. That's beautiful. Yeah. I wanted to say also, there's, um, I want to introduce you to some point to Jaylene Tracy, who um, is now doing um, Manted energy updates um, on our channel uh, at the beginning of every month. She might be another Mantis contact. And oh, also okay. I have this, yeah, right? And, and and there's been a lot of Mantid energy with uh, with Third Eye Salon lately. Our, our last guest, mm-hmm. um, Matthew Mornian, um, also has strong Mantis connections. So I'm thinking about, would it, I have this, we did this sh- special show once, but I'd like to make it a, a reoccurring uh, thing called Third Eye Saloon instead of Third Eye Salon where um, it's later in the day. So if you want to have a smoky or a drinky- little happy hour. Uh, little happy hour, exactly. Yeah. And then I have three people come in who are, you know, as opposed to it being three co-hosts and one one uh, guest, it's three guests and I'm, uh, you know, hosting it. And we do a compare contrast on a specific theme. And wouldn't it be fun to have a Third Eye Saloon um, extravaganza with a a mantis focus yeah I think that would be so fun you could do it for all the different star races bring together bring together the galactic family I'm actually teaching later today on portal to ascension about the star races and today actually on star family wisdom our meet the star races course is launching so I'm teaching about um not all of them because there's an incredible amount of diversity, you know, in our universe, but um, a lot of the primary ones that are in contact with earth and with humans right now to help people get to know them and why they're here. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, You're doing so much with that channel. Well, I'll definitely have to check that out. Well, okay. Then speaking of that, let's, let's get into your other uh, contact experiences. And we had done like in our pre-show chat, we had talked about um, you connecting into your, uh, being in a mantis form and having this experience oh, of, yeah. Uh, yeah, of reconnecting to your, your mantis family back on the ship. And, um, so people can watch that clip if they want to watch that clip. It's really, I think it's really beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful sharing moment. And what other, since you're, you know, connecting to these other star races, what are your other connections that you're experiencing? Can you bring us into more of your firsthand experiences of reconnection? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So the, you know, the primary connection has been the mantis connection up until now. And, and my understanding is that I'm supposed to have a deeper connection with them just for the purpose of what, you know, we're doing here. Um, but I, and more in the last year actually have, have accessed some more connections and um, have purposefully, you know, attempted to connect. And I understand now that um, I have a Syrian connection. So, you know, the Syrians have supported 
a lot of the like spiritual education on earth over the last few thousand years as earth has been in its dark ages and we're working to get through that. You know, the Syrians have shown up in various ways, like, um, like Pharaoh Akhenaten, you know, in Egypt was a Syrian being partially Syrian being, you know, they've influenced a lot of um, our spiritual evolution. So, so it was kind of through that um, race that I have, I came to earth, I think in some of my past life experiences and in those capacities. Um, so it was kind of that connection uh, for that purpose. And then I know I've got an Arcturian connection of some sort. Like I've had, I've had some experiences, I think, um, in the Arcturian community. And then, uh, there's been more of a, a Lyran Lyran connection showing up over the last year. I actually, similar to that clip where I describe in a meditation, having this, like, what Kat and I think is a future memory of me as a mantis. Um, like I, I, I went into the mantis form and felt all of that sensation. I've had that happen also as like a, a feline kind of like lion being and, um, and experienced myself like in this like lion body, but I was standing on two legs. So it wasn't like the lions, you know, here on earth. So that was really interesting. So, so yeah, I've had more of these moments where I'm accessing either uh, a memory of an experience being that being, or I've accessed some sort of, you know, telepathic channel with, you know, beings that, you know, I have association with. So, so again, the mantis one is the strongest. I'm not, you know, in connection with all these others all the time, it seems like, but, but there have been more moments over the last year or so where those connections are being made known to me now, which is kind of cool. So what is the talk going to be on today? Was, uh, I guess I, I want to know where is the content coming from that you're going to be sharing later today on your channel about the different star nations? Where is that coming in from? Yeah, good question. So, so this is a, a like a full day workshop with a bunch of different people. Um, Barbara Lamb's going to be there, Dan Winter, Adam Apollo, Geraldine Orozco. So a ton of people and all talking on different topics. Um, so it's going to be all about the races, the ET planets, technology, contact technology. And, and, and my particular part of the talk is on the races themselves. And so, um, you know, I've shared with you how, you know, part of my experience has been my, you know, my own personal experience and contact, but also research. They've guided me, you know, to various, you know, information to put the pieces of the puzzle together. So the information, you know, is not only my own experience, but through, regression cases through galactic channeling resources, um, the ones that I feel are the most credible and um, ancient history research. Uh, so a variety of ways, um, some government, you know, official disclosure um, that has come through over the last couple of years that's helping us understand more about, you know, the government's a contact. So, so it's coming from all of those sources. It's kind of the breadth of information that we have right now that's out there that I'm putting together and offering um, in a way that I think represents our, our best understanding, you know, of, of who they are at a high level. You know, it's, there's still going to be a lot of, a lot of detail we don't have. And, and some of, you know, the detail we do have is probably inaccurate, you know, some of it's probably not exactly, you know, right, because it's all being filtered through our perception through our human minds, but, but it's, I think the best representation we have of what we know right now. I'm wondering, Jason, are you picking up on anything in terms of um, any of Jenna's, because uh, Jason can see and in, in, like, visually well, the show. lion energy? Like, even in the pre chat, I was like, because I call them the Thundercats, because I'm a child <laughs> of the 80s. You know, and I, you know, it's my reference, right? It's my okay. reference point. Um, yeah, definitely. God, I've got the chill, but and let me say this too. I love the fact that you're so humble and you're like, you know, some of the energy could be, or some of the messages could be wrong. You know, it's, it's coming through the human filter. Like it, it makes it so much more relatable, but yet definite Lyran, however you want to pronounce it, potato, yeah. potato, right? right? Definite Thundercat, um, Thundercat energy 
I love and, it. Um, I'll tell you the first thing that I see in my head, I actually see two. I see one that's white, that would be like an albino, right? Like lion. And there's a blue fur, like blue fur. I mean, a lion, our lions don't have um, blue fur, but yeah, um, there's definitely two. Um, mm -hmm. the, and I feel like the, I feel like the blue one, he's, I don't know, he stands taller or he, he shows himself standing taller than the white one, which I don't know if that's a significance of a role mm -hmm. or if he's just physically, um, taller than, uh, but yeah, I, I knew you, I knew it. I knew you had the lion, yeah. um, the lion energy. They're thank my you favorite. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. validating that. Cause that, that's actually one I haven't had validated by someone else yet, but, yeah. but it's been coming through for me over the last year. And so I've been kind of curious about that one. Do you remember the old Hannah Barbera cartoon blue fur? It was the blue hound dog. No. Um, that's what, that's almost what, so like, <laughs> obviously sometimes we can't physically pronounce like our vocal cords can't pronounce their names. And sometimes they don't have names because their energy yeah. is their name. Yeah. Um, but I keep wanting to call the blue, the, the blue fur one. <laughs> I want to call blue fur because they're showing me that old Hanna Barbera. Oh, wow. Um, cartoon of the blue hound dog. and His name was blue fur. Cool. Um, yeah, that's really awesome. Okay, um, I'm going to have, I'm gonna have to explore that one some more. Yeah, Look into it. I'll look into it. Cool. And I feel like the white one, are you, I don't know if you're, if you do this or if you're thinking about it, there's some type of Reiki hands-on laying of the hands energy. Um, and I feel like that, I feel like that's what he's the white furred one. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's what, I almost want to call him Samson. Um, it's that <laughs> type of energy. Yeah. Um, there's something about channeling, um, yeah. like healing and like a, like the hand chakra is like laying yeah. of the hands. Well, and that's partially what I do in energy sessions, right? Is like an illumination where I'm bringing energy into people's chakras. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's a being I'm, I'm working with more on that when that happens. Yeah. That feels right to me. I feel like it sits right with me. Okay, cool. I'm going to call him Samson. Yeah. That's such a cool name, right? <laughs> such a cool name. Um, let's get into your shamanic work. We've got about 25 yeah. minutes left um, of the hour. And I know, you know, you've got a Native American connection. Uh, Linda has a strong Native American connection, both genetically as well as just soul wise. So I'm, I'm wondering, how did the shamanism come in? And how is that connected to the ETs? Yeah, great question. So um, yeah, it connects with what Jason was just picking up on. You know, I years ago actually started, you know, having this fascination with Peru, started reading a lot of books on Peru and the, the conquest, you know, that happened when the Incan empire fell and, um, and, you know, really wanted to go to Peru at some point. So I, I had that kind of in mind. Um, and yeah, I'm Cherokee, but I wasn't really raised in the culture. So I, you know, I was raised outside of, um, you know, the Native American culture in Oklahoma, but I knew I had that connection. And so as an adult, and especially as my spiritual awakening started, I got more and more curious, you know, about that ancestry. And, you know, I started learning more about you know, various things, you know, indigenous origin stories and myths that have been passed on that are very different than our mainstream history has told us. Um, and, uh, you know, things about indigenous wisdom and the, the healing practices and abilities that shamans have. And so I started to connect with some of that information and very much like a lot of my other research felt guided, you know, by my team. Um, I think, you know, I was led very specifically to uh, a school that um, is, was founded by Alberto Violdo, the Four Winds Society, and he's worked with shamans, the Caro lineage of shamans in Peru for decades. And he first got connected with them um, as a medical anthropologist. So he was just studying them, right. Studying them. I think he first got sent to the Amazon by a pharmaceutical company he was working for, right. Cause they, they want to, you know, go learn all the secrets. And so he starts studying these people and 
starts to realize they have a very different understanding of reality, you know, than white Westerners do. And, and, and they are healing, right? Like they're healing each other. And, um, and clearly there's something that we're missing, right? In our Western um, cosmology and understanding of things. And so, so fast forward, you know, he spent decades studying with them and got initiated by their highest shamans. And um, he was asked to be a bridge between their world and the Western world and to carry forth all of their teachings and to share that, you know, with the world. And so, um, so I started studying with his school and felt instantly very connected to the teachings and, and knew that these teachings and practices are pure, like they are so pure. And the reason is because these teachings um, that I've learned from come from the Caro shaman, the Caro nation in Peru. And this group of people escaped the Spanish conquest. So when the Spanish, you know, um, uh, conquistadors showed up and were wreaking havoc across South America and North America, this group of indigenous people, they were Incans, like they're, they're descendants of the Incans, the original Incans, they fled and they went in like to 15,000 feet in the mountains and hid for hundreds of years. And they just led their life for the, ever since the Spanish conquest, they've been living their life, living these very pure spiritual and energy medicine practices and ways of life. And it wasn't until around, I think like 1950s or 60s that they emerged and kind of reintroduced themselves to the Western world and said, we, we have a prophecy to share and we want to share our medicine with the world. We want to share this and spread it because it's time. It's time for the world to know, um, you know, these pure energy medicine and spiritual traditions. So what was so, her prophecy real quick? What was her prophecy? Yeah. Oh yeah. So the prophecy of Pachacuti, you can, you can look up some different videos um, about it on YouTube, but essentially um, it's a prophecy that's been corroborated by other prophecies like the Hopi and the Navajo have had very similar prophecies and then they all tell the same story. And that talks about this time we're living in on earth. They saw that we, our modern civilization would have evolved in a, not so spiritual way and would have, you know, created the, you know, uh, ecological crisis, technological, you know, um, advancement that's happening on the planet. Um, they saw that we would get to a critical point, right, as a civilization and the um, various indigenous origin stories talk about how we have lived on this planet in advanced civilizations before. This is not the only advanced civilization that has lived on this planet. This is the fourth world. This is the fourth advanced civilization that has lived on this planet that they remember, that they have passed down from their origin stories. And so this prophecy talks about how you know, we're living at the end of the fourth world. And I don't say that to, you know, cause concern or be a doomsday person, because that's not what it's about, but it is about this turning of the tide. It's about um, a period of, you know, some breakdown and some, you know, hard stuff, you know, that we're going through as a civilization that will help us break through to the fifth world. And so they talked about how, um, you know, in this prophecy, those who reconnect with the earth and reconnect with our mother, because the earth is our, our mother, you know, we come from her, um, people who, you know, set that intention of really embodying that spiritual mastery and stepping onto that path and honoring the earth and honoring all of life and coming back to that way of living will move through this time of change in an easier way. And so, so, you know, they talked about what we're going through right now and that, um, you know, this is a, a choice point for us as a civilization and as people, right? Like what Linda was talking about earlier, like, is it, are we going to put people first going forward? Right? Like what's important to us? What are our values? And, um, and we can either go through a major breakdown and destruction, or we can choose a better way forward. And so, um, so, you know, it was through learning about that prophecy and reconnecting with 
you know, these teachings and these very pure energy medicine practices that, um, you know, I realized, yeah, like this is something I'm meant to one, you know, learn and practice myself for the people around me, but also to help again, bridge this understanding of how different our reality can be and how interconnected the spirit and the mind and the body is and how, how we can work with the world of energy in a way that our modern civilization has just written off as like, you know, woo woo stuff. And it's not right. It is, it is our actual reality and it is how our reality works. And the reason we have so much disease and dysfunction and um, all of that is because we have denied <laughs> this part of our reality. And, and so, yeah, it's been a really beautiful process of, you know, reconnecting with that wisdom and what's beautiful too about the tradition I've learned from in South America is that it's so similar to so many of the North American traditions, you know? So um, what I'm seeing now, you know, when I look across all of our spiritual traditions across the world, all of our indigenous wisdom traditions, they all stem from a common source, you know? So like, we're not all different tribes. We're not all different religions. We all came from a previous civilization. We come from the stars. We, all of our traditions and our religions are, you know, are grounded in one common spiritual truth about our reality and about our universe. And, and that can be really beautiful to reconnect with. So, so my shamanic path and practice, you know, has been about learning how to channel energy about, um, you know, how to evolve my energy field and change my energy field in a way that allows me to be a, a channel and, um, and has helped me really deeply connect with the wisdom that's available on our planet. And it, you know, it breaks my heart, you know, that our, indigenous communities and our elders have not been honored in the way they need to be. Yeah. Speak to that. I can, you, you're really feeling that. Would you just share your heart around that right now? Because I think, I think we need to hear this. Yeah, I think, you know, like I was saying, the, the Western world, right, has really denied a huge part of our experience. And and the human experience can be so much more beautiful when we when we honor that that wisdom that is there for us to embody and again so many of us have been taught that these things right like jason what you experience is is not natural or scary or is woo woo or whatever it is right we've been taught that and that's wrong right like that's and it's just wrong. It's not the truth of how our reality works. It's not the truth of who we are and what we're capable of. And, and our indigenous brothers and sisters have, and elders have sought to preserve that understanding and they have hid it from the powers that be, right? They have hid it from the world because the world was not ready. The world, you know, we fell into a state of darkness, right? We fell into a state of devolution over the last few thousand years where we allowed the, you know, male dominated patriarchal systems and cultures to take over our world. And that has crushed, right, that memory of our matriarchal societies that once existed. And many of our indigenous cultures and communities once thrived and flourished in a matriarchal, um, more kind of divine feminine um, way of living. And we once lived in a much more balanced, beautiful way. And we've lost our way in a lot of ways. And, and, and it's just very sad, right? That, you know, so much of that wisdom up until now, you know, has not been honored in the way it needs to be. And, um, and I think, you know, we all, you know, just, 
should feel so much gratitude, you know, for, for all of the, the mystics, all of the elders, all of the people who have sought to preserve our understanding of how the universe works, our understanding of spirituality, our understanding of um, the truth of energy and how that connects, you know, with our, our physical reality, because it is through reconnecting with that and reintegrating that in our lives that we will save our world. Yeah. And waking it back up within ourselves. Like it's, yeah. it's there, it's dormant. And yeah. it feels like, to me, it feels like your heart breaks because of the disrespect. Yeah. Like your yeah. heart breaks over the, the disrespect and the annihilation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we like, I know so many people feel that, right. And it's not just, you know, that that's, you know, happened with our Native American and Indigenous communities, right? That's happened all over the world, right? Global. Where, you know, we've, yeah, moved into this state of separation and, you know, um, you know, what happened, you know, with white colonialism around the world just is a symptom of that. And, and thank God we're starting to come out of that, you know, thank God we are like moving into a different era where we can change, we can choose to change what we created, right? Because what we created is not sustainable and is obviously not healthy and is not right. And so, and and there's such an an incredibly beautiful movement around that right now, right? To to make different choices and to to remember that we're actually all one, and to remember that you know we don't have to you know be in competition with each other and, um, and that, you know, we don't have to have, you know, someone in between us and our connection with source, right? Like that we can have that connection with source so that we can, you know, have this connection with nature and mother earth in a way that we haven't been taught. Right. Um, and so, so, you know, we're, we're at a really cool point, right? Like it's heartbreaking that humans had to go through what we've gone through. It's, it's, effed up right and and embarrassing it's yes it's embarrassing it's it's embarrassing you know to all of creation that you know we went through this but it these sorts of things do happen you know when you're in that third dimensional um state of separation right like we have experienced the extremes of polarization and that's not the case for every civilization that goes through their awakening, right? But we've experienced one of the harder cases of that. And, and I think that's important for people to know, right? Like, cause a lot of, especially, you know, spiritual people, light workers, you know, who come on the planet, look around and are mad, you know, like it's easy to get mad about what has happened. And, and, and we have to understand that, you know, earth has been in trouble. Like earth has not been going yeah. down a, a, a positive trajectory. And, and, you know, we've experienced a, a lot of trauma over the last few thousand years. And, and that's why we're all here. We're here to change that, you know, we're here to, to contribute, you know, to society and our civilization in ways that help people make different choices and help us repair, you know, that, that damage. So, so it's a beautiful time to be alive. It's a lot, you know, it's a lot to process, <laughs> right. For all of us, but, but gosh, like the mission that, everyone here signed up for to be here in this moment is pretty badass. Like that's pretty amazing to be here in this moment, to be able to contribute to this sort of change and transformation of a civilization on this scale. And can you give us the name and possibly the spelling of the tribe that you're referring to? Because people are wanting to know that specifically. Yeah. Look up the Caro nation. Um, it's Q apostrophe E-R-O. Um, so that's the um, group in Peru that um, the lineage I have studied with has come from. And there's some beautiful, um, you know, videos of them practicing on YouTube. You can look up the, pro the prophecy of Pachacuti where their medicine people, their shamans are delivering the prophecy and connecting um, to access, you know, probabilities, right? So that, that's what they're doing. Um, and then, and then the school that I've learned from is the, the four winds society. Can you possibly spell Pachacuti? <laughs> yeah. P-A-C-H-A-C-U-T-I. 
like a spelling bee for the mystics. Yeah. Um, <laughs> left, left brain. Everyone get in the left brain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Miss Linda, Jason, did you have any reflections, questions? Uh, I, I think I've gotten all mine out. I'm just grateful to be able to share the time. It's been, it's yeah. been a great experience. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. You're so dear, Jason. Ms. Yeah, Linda? for me, it's just uh, my husband had this amazing epiphany uh, when eBay was first starting for us to go to the Hopi reservation and we would go there three, four times a year at the beginning. And there was this point where, and, and the reason I'm bringing it up is their matriarch society. And the, we would drive over this crest and it was like, I don't know what happens at that point in the road but we both would feel it every time. It was like walking, driving through a veil, uh, you know, or with a rainstorm where it's raining and then it's not. And that complete different energy was so apparent that we both, we never talked about it, but we both felt it. And then probably in our second year of going, it's like, what is that spot? And they're like, oh, that's where our, our nation begins. Oh, I love that. Wow. And it was just that strong. So, yeah, I just have this huge, huge uh, connection with the Native American energy. And, mm -hmm. and I, my heart breaks because they have, have been so decimated in so many ways that, that there's a heart sickness within the people mm -hmm. in every tribe. Yeah. And... Um, what we have done to them. And I love that they're starting to, to come back up in their own powers mm -hmm. because we need it. We Absolutely. need that energy worldwide and Absolutely. it's happened worldwide. Yeah. And my hope is, you know, that pendulum is swinging from the far left back over to the right. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think it, it's on all of us to contribute to that, you know, and to, yeah. to support that, that movement and that shift and, and to, to raise up, you know, those people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Holding that space is so important and, and declaring that you support the values that mm -hmm. they have. Yeah. It's really yeah. important. And the values that they're striving to regain, that they've yes. lost. Yes. And what strikes me as so beautiful and poignant and such a great example for all of us is that no matter how decimated and, you know, terrible, um, you know, the situation was for, you know, Native American people on this continent there has also been such a generosity of spirit, right? Like think about how, you know, the, the elders didn't have to come out and share those prophecies, right? They didn't have to share their wisdom. They didn't have to share their medicine teachings with the world, right? They were wronged by the world, but yet they do it anyway, because it's the right thing to do. And, and, and they are walking that spiritual warrior path, right? It's like, no matter what someone else has done to them, they are still going to show up for the good of everyone. And that is, I think like the deepest lesson, like we can all take away, you know, super humbling, super yeah. humbling to look at that because it would be just easy to pack up shock and be say, we right. take care of our own and you're on your own because right. X, Y, Z and who could possibly blame them. Right. Um, yeah. All right. Before we get into our, our final, um, well, my final little question is going to be um, to, to share us, sh share with us something, your, your final message with us, Jenna. But before we do that, um, I wanted to share a little picture and I was probably very distracting earlier during our talk, but I, I was like, oh my gosh, all this cat talk, especially blue cat. I, I wanted to retrieve this picture, which I drew back in 1997. It was maybe 1998, but this was like when I was like going through a lot of my ET stuff. And so for, I'll say I am no Jason Adkins, so don't judge me. Um, but I wanted to share this. And so this is my little um, cat being that I drew way back in the day. 
<laughs> and um, he's, he's um, yeah, it was just basically an ET, ET connection for me in terms of just something intuitive. And remember, I mean, that movie came out like in the late 2000s, I think 2009, mm -hmm. um, what was it? Was it Avatar, Avatar. Yeah. And so it was, I was like, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I was like, I drew that like, you know, 10 plus years before. Amazing. So that's my little um, exclusive, but it made me think of the whole, what, what Jason was talking about with the blue lion people, so. Beautiful. That's and he's naked. He's naked, <laughs> yeah. I know, I was like, I'll, I'll show the bits. I'll show the bits. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that stuff's real, right? Like we're like, come on, like Avatar, you know, came from our collective consciousness, right? From our, our memory. memory. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so thanks we for were me. Oh, I was just gonna say we were actually talking in the chat about that, how many of the things in movies are are reflections of of that consciousness coming out yeah. of of an introduction. Yes. Yes. Getting us ready. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Jenna, what is your final, your final card that you'd like to lay before us um, on for today's show? Well, thank you so much, everyone. This has been so fun and um, it's just an honor to, to share. And thank you for asking so many amazing questions. You know, I think you know, we, we talked about some heavy stuff there. So, you know, I think it's also important to remember, you know, no matter what's going on in the world, like you're here to create your reality and to follow your passions. Because when you do that, life gets infinitely better and the universe swoops in to support you. And ultimately, that's what we're here to do, right? We're here to follow our passions, to, to share love and to light the world up with as much love as we can. And to, to just be our true weird selves, no matter how weird that is. And, and to just allow that to happen. And, and so, you know, it's real easy when, you know, we look out at the world and everything that's going on to, to feel, feel the heaviness of that. But, but we are here, you're here to change that. And it's only through like following your passion and, and allowing yourself to express yourself freely and, and, and share love, you know, with yourself and others that, that we make that change. So, you know, I talked about Bashar earlier and, you know, some of the ET teachings that I love and, and that's one that Bashar talks about a lot, you know, is just following your passion and letting that guide you. And then when you do synchronicity and magic shows up, right. To put the right pieces of the puzzle together. So, so, so get out of any fear, you know, you're in and, and let that go. And, and I hope that, you know, me sharing some about my experiences, given, given all of you permission to be more of your weird selves. Yeah. Uh, amen. I think uh, you've been such a great ambassador of um, merging the left and right spheres together in a way of balance speaking about, you know, the masculine, the feminine, the Western civilization, the ancient civilization. I feel like you're this somebody who embodies the work of merging the two. So there's balance for all, balance within and balance for all. Um, I think that you're a great spokesperson for that. Um, all right, I'm gonna flip this into Brady Bunch view and Miss Linda, would you begin our gratitudes? Of course. And as always, we've had great chats going on on the side. Thank you, everyone, for everything that you have contributed to it. Make sure you hit the like button, share and uh, share this with your friends that you think can hear this. I, I know I've been popping in and out sharing it as I go um, with people because I heard things that I knew they could relate to and needed to relate to. So be sure you share so that they can hear those messages too. Um, check out the, the connections below. Make sure that you look at those for your connections with Jenna, Jason. Jason, remember, has his own past podcast with us. So check that out as well. And Jenna, thank you for bringing this beautiful energy. Everyone is loving how down to earth you are, how you are bringing in that whole being that, that, you know, we, we don't have to be, we, there's, there's all radiance 
and all gradients of where we are in this. And I think it's, that's the beauty because I think we've only seen the far extremes for right. so many years that bringing it into the center where it's more relatable is phenomenal yeah. and um, can bring in a lot of people that maybe were afraid to be called woo woo before. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's how we move forward. So, so much more quickly. And Jason, thank you so much for everything you always add to the conversation. Love it. People were really relating to what you were saying. Thank you. And, you know, I want to echo what Jenna said, embrace your weirdoness, right? Magic can happen. Absolutely does. I'm going to have to get, get a drawing from you at some point, Jason. We'll have to talk. <laughs> uh, I'll be waiting. I've already got ideas. <laughs> I've already got ideas. <laughs> Yeah, and I would say if anyone's interested, now's the time to get Jason because his prices are stupid low right now because he hasn't really come all the way out into doing this as a regular full-time thing. When he does, he's going to be a booked. So um, yeah, grab his link now and connect with him now. Um, and then I will let you know that next week, our guest is Tannis Hallowell. And she is somebody who's had an ND experience. She has connections with the, the Fey folk, the we folk. And I'm stealing her from our friend, uh, Karin Swain. I, I found her on Karin's show. So um, go into our Facebook group and meet us there. And um, I'll be sharing information about uh, Tannis as we get into next week. So you can learn about her and her amazing adventures and just the incredible repertoire of work that she does. So um, with that, thank you again, everyone. A fantastic show. It's just been such a delight to have Jenna on. And I hope we can do future work with Jenna in the future because I just, I love her just gentle strength and her radiance. So super grateful. Um, please take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kinder to others. We love you. Thank you all for being here. And we'll see you next week, everyone. Take care. Hi, everyone. Hi.